if you have just got a Venus flytrap or have one for a while and you're keeping it indoors, you're killing your plant. Let me tell you why. Venus flytraps are these carnivorous plants that we all know about that are very unique and interesting in that their traps close. It's very slow actually. But as you can see, it's closing around my finger. That makes them very unique and interesting, especially because they catch insects, they catch bugs, they catch basically anything that can get into the trap and stay in the trap and cause it to, you know, close and eat whatever's in there. Now, if you didn't know it, Venus fly traps are native to North and South Carolina in the USA. I don't know if there's any other Carolinas around the world, but those are the two places that they are native to. And where they're native to, they live in marshlands like bogs, where the ground is very, very moist and there is generally always a water supply of some sort and very little or few big trees that actually provide a lot of shade and cover to these plants. So what does that mean for your Venus flower trap? Well, it means that your plants need to actually be kept outside. Yes, these plants are not indoor plants. So if you did just get a Venus flytrap and you read the instructions at the back and it says something like keep it in partial sunlight and shade or something, trust me it is wrong. These plants need as much sunlight as possible. If they could be outside in like a hundred hours of sunlight every day, if it was even possible, they would love it. Obviously it's not possible, but you get what I'm trying to say. These plants need the sunlight, which means that if you're growing them indoors, if you're growing them on a windowsill, or if you're growing them like next to an orchid or something, your plant will most likely end up dying. Now, that's not to say that your specific plant is going to die immediately. They do take a while to die, which means that they're like suffering or something, which is pretty sad, but you can actually fix your plant. You can save it. And I will explain to you how you can do that right now. First off, Look at your Venus flytrap. How does it look? Does it look like this one? Does it look healthy still? Well, if it does still look healthy, if you've recently got it and it looked healthy when you got it as well, what you can do is literally find a spot outside that has a lot of sunlight, as much sunlight as possible, at least eight hours of direct sunlight and put your plant there. That will be very, very good. They'll be very happy. Now, if you've had your plant for a while and it's actually getting quite long and leggy, it's not looking that good, starting to become unhealthy or if you got the plant like that then you will need to acclimate your plant and sorry for the wind guys it is always windy whenever i try to record what the acclimation process actually is is you getting your plant used to the sunlight again if you were for example to take a fish from cold water and put it into warm hot water immediately the fish will literally undergo shock and end up dying and it's windy again love it and it's the same with the plants if your plant has been sunlight starved and you put it directly outside into the bright sunlight immediately like the chances of your plants surviving is 50 50. it will get a shock and it will most likely lose all of its leaves and you'll get scared and you'll wonder why the plant is dying and what you've done and then put it back inside where it will continue to die and it just makes it a whole lot worse. So make sure that you actually acclimate your plant to the sunlight or else it will most probably die, especially for those of us who are beginners at growing these amazing plants. Now, let me explain to you what the acclimation process is. The acclimation process is when you take the plant and you put it somewhere outside that is shady. It's a little bit brighter than where it was outside. It's shady but it gets more sunlight. That's the key point, just a little bit more. And you leave it in that spot for about two weeks or long enough that you can see new growth coming out of the crown of the plant, the middle of the plant here. This is actually a flower stalk and we're going to be growing our flowers out guys. So subscribe to the channel if you wanna see how to pollinate the flowers. But you see that little guy there? That is a new leaf coming out. So when you see your new leaves coming out in this new position, that's when you know you're ready to move the plant into a even sunnier position and you do that again for another two weeks and you continuously give the plant more and more sunlight over like a two month or so period until the point where it's actually getting full sunlight it's a slow process but one that is very important to ensure that you don't give your plant a big shock when going from no light to a lot of light but they do need as much sunlight as possible now sunlight is just one of the 
couple things that a Venus flytrap really needs to survive. If you don't know it yet, they need to be kept in the right soil, peat and perlite, or peat and sand. They need to be kept in plastic pots and you'll be sitting all the time in a bowl of distilled rainwater or reverse osmosis water. That's the basic care. But this whole video is not to say that your plant actually can't survive indoors. Now, I know this is going against what I just said, and I will always recommend to everyone to grow your plant outdoors, but in some cases, you actually can grow it indoors. Now, don't immediately assume that your case is the case, but let me explain to you how it could be possible. If you have a Venus flytrap that you got and you're living in a country that gets like no sunlight ever or for whatever reason, like, you know, some places in Europe or something, or if you're living like very North Canada or I don't know. If you're living somewhere that has very little sunlight and like your windowsill genuinely doesn't even give it sunlight and you don't have anywhere to put the plant outside because it's consistently below zero Celsius in the winter time or something, you can actually grow it indoors. But you will need a grow light and a very powerful one at that. I am not the person to ask for grow light help. I have never grown my plants under grow lights because like I say, I practice what I preach keep the plants outdoors but some people might want to grow them indoors because they only live in an apartment with no windows or whatever it can be possible with very very strong grow lights what I do know is that they need 6500 K um, high output CFL T5 um, grow lights those ones can actually grow your plants but the next thing that you'd have to then look at is photo period photo period is the amount of time that your plants get sunlight. It's in the name. Photo in Latin means light and period is an amount of time. Photo period. In summertime the plants need like 18 hours of sunlight like you normally do in summer. There's more sun in summer and less sun in winter. And what that also means is that when it's winter time you need to give the plant less sunlight. More like 12 hours of sunlight a day. What this does is that it mimics the amount of sunlight that the plant would naturally get in the wild so that the plant actually knows, hey, it's summer, it's time to flower, and hey, it's winter, it's time to go dormant. That's what you need to do with your photo periods after you have gotten the correct grow lights. Now, after that, you need to then climate control the plant and the environment around it, and it's windy again. So in summertime, you want it to be obviously substantially warmer than in winter time. Where I live here in Australia, it can get up to 45 degrees Celsius in summertime, and a humidity of like 30%. The plants are fine. They just need more water. They genuinely are fine. And in winter time, they get down to zero and sometimes even below freezing and they do fine. Like I said, they're native to the Carolinas, the Martians there, where it gets super hot and muggy and also pretty cold as you can imagine. The plants do more than well enough. But if you're growing the plant indoors, you know, no one really wants to be living in a sauna and an ice block at the same time. So if you do really want to have it indoors, you need to somehow manipulate the environmental conditions inside of the house to match that as much as possible to the wild. So in winter, it needs to be cold. In summer, it has to be hot for the plant's well-being. So you're wondering to yourself, how the hell are you actually going to grow your plants indoors if you have to? And I guess that's where like indoor greenhouses come into play. Well, an indoor greenhouse is exactly that. It's a greenhouse that you have inside of your house. Basically, you can get one of those small green plastic greenhouses, put it somewhere in your house or if you have a garage or something, put it in there and climate control the greenhouse and put the light inside. You will struggle to get it cold in there. It will be easy to get it hot in there but it definitely is possible. And I still do not recommend that you do that, especially if you can put your plant outside. And if you can't put it outside, but you do have access to a windowsill that gets at least eight hours of sunlight, that is still better than trying to put it somewhere inside of a house in a greenhouse. But still, it is really not recommended. Now, you may be wondering, well, you got the Venus flytrap, why do the instructions tell you something different to what I'm telling you? And you may be wondering, am I right or is the instructions right? Well, let me tell you this. All of my plants 
just like this one, have been growing outside for as long as I've had them. I've been growing plants now, these Venus, Venus flat traps, for 12 years or so. That is basically half the length of my life that I've been growing these plants. And I have never grown a carnivorous plant indoors, except for sprouting Darlingtonia seeds, which I eventually gave up on and moved them outside. And as you can see, the Venus flower traps are very, very healthy. So what I'm trying to say about this is that for 12 years, I have been able to grow a Venus flower trap outside. I do not know of anyone who's been able to keep a Venus flower trap alive inside, indoors for 12 years. So yeah, plants come from outside and that's the environment that they need. If you don't want to take my advice, that's all right, but I do hope that your plant does make it. We don't want our plants to die, guys. But if you do have any questions about them, feel free to contact me on Facebook, Instagram, email, or in the description below, in the comments below. I'm happy to help you guys out. So please do not feel stressed. I'm there to help you and to guide you with your plant, but I will tell you to put it outside. Now that we've covered the parts about how to help your plants if you are growing it inside, now that we know why your plant is dying and how we can fix it, you might be wondering, well, what Venus flower traps actually, or what kind of plants can actually be grown indoors? Now, there are a couple. The first one is Nepenthes. These guys are tropical pitcher plants that make little jugs and they attract and capture small insects that, you know, want to taste little nectar on their lids. And they taste the nectar, they get, in some cases, drunk and they actually slip on the peristome and fall inside where they actually drown and get digested in the stomach of the Nepenthes pitcher. Pretty gnarly, but yeah, that's what happens. Besides them, you can grow some sun juice indoors, some of the shade-loving sun juice, for example, Drosera schizandra, Prolifera, Adelaide, they do well indoors. They can do well outdoors, they can do well indoors too. It is so windy, guys, I'm sorry. And the other one that you can grow indoors are pink whittler, butterworts. These guys actually prefer windowsills. They really do not like a lot of sunlight. If I were to grow them myself, if I had any, I would actually grow them with the shade-loving carnivorous plants that I have that are under the porch. Like I said, I don't like growing the plants indoors. I want them to be outside where they can have all the environmental factors and the change in temperatures and all that stuff but I would put them in the bright shade so they can also do well indoors too. Now these guys, they're also pretty, also pretty simple to actually care for. They just need the same type of watering requirements as the Venus flower traps. Obviously less sunlight and in most cases, almost the same type of soil. And it, it works, it's very easy. Our Nepenthes that we have is under the patio. It gets absolutely no sunlight. Um, besides you know the bright shade and it does fine it should get a little bit more sunlight so I'm trying to find somewhere to move it that can get a little bit more sunlight but otherwise it's fine and it's happy and if you really are struggling with getting a carnivorous plant that needs the shade because of whatever situation that you're living in those plants could actually work for you I hope you guys found this video informative so now that you know what is going on with your plant now you know why you might be killing it I hope that you can rectify the situation if you have any questions, please, like I said, contact me wherever you want. I'm happy to help. And if you want me to make a specific video on a specific topic, let me know. I'm very, very happy to help you guys with anything. And if it is a very good topic, I will make a video on it so that I can answer it for you and for everyone else. So, yeah, if you guys enjoyed it, if you found it helpful, please remember to like. And I'm going to say, like everyone else, subscribe to the channel because I want to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year guys and we just hit 6,000 so thank you very much for that guys but let's get to 10,000 anyway hope you guys found this Venus flytrap video helpful and I'll see you guys in the next one